Have you been thinking of selling your home? Do you really need to downsize? Do you really need to upsize? Do you just want to get out of town fast? Do you want to cash in on the huge Salt Lake market growth, which has occurred over the last five years? Do you want to get your house ready to sell without spending a lot of money? Well, in this video, we're going to give you four tips on what you can do now to get your home on the market ASAP. Here we go. Hi, my name is Robert Luke, and I've been a realtor in the Salt Lake area since 2005. In that time, I've helped my clients buy or sell hundreds of homes. Today, I'm going to give you four tips on getting your home ready to sell. If you incorporate these four tips as you prepare to sell your home, you'll be well on your way to getting top dollar at minimum cost. First, I'm going to start with some general rules, and then I'm gonna dive into more detailed recommendations. Obviously, however, to give you the best advice, I would need to see your home. But these four tips should get you well on your way. If you would like me to come out and look at your house, just give me a call or text at 801-243-7804. Tip number one, the type and price range of your home will determine how much work you need to do to get it ready. Now, this seems like an obvious statement, but let's look at your buyer for a second. Is your home what we would call an executive home, which is at the upper end of the price range in the Salt Lake market? And I'm not talking about $5 million mansions here, but homes at the upper end of the market, say over 750 in the Salt Lake, Provo, Ogden area. I found over the years that the buyers for these types of homes feel that they're already paying a lot for the house, and they don't want to have to update a bunch of things. They want everything working well and looking good. They want the kitchen to have been updated. They want the carpets or hardwood floors to be in excellent shape. And they want the walls to have been repaired or painted. They want the yard to look sharp and not be a jungle. In many cases, you are really competing with new construction homes in which the buyer can pick and get exactly what they want. With a new home, you get that new car smell, but with an older home, generally you get more land, finished yards, developed neighborhoods, and finished basements. So your home in that price range needs to be ready for prime time. You will need to take the time to finish off the projects that you started 20 years ago and make sure that the little areas that don't quite match are completed. As you've probably been there a while, it's going to be time to completely declutter your house to make your home look really big and beautiful. Storage pods are a good way to move things out of the house. Another idea is just put it in the garage. I mean, as long as the buyer can see how big your garage is, they know you're moving. So if you have a whole bunch of boxes in the garage, that's fine. One thing to remember, there are plenty of executive homes in the Salt Lake area. Buyers are looking for intangible items like uh, the number of trees on the lot, the size of the garage, the openness, the ability to park that huge RV that they have. If your home was built before the 1990s, it probably doesn't have the open feel of the newer homes. What you need to do is try to make your home as bright and big as possible, which we'll get into later. Okay, on the other hand, if you're not an executive home, if your home is more of a starter home or a potential investment home, what do you need to look at? First of all, the buyer is probably already planning to upgrade the house. They will want to paint the walls. They will want to replace the carpet, possibly change to laminate wood floors. Over time, they'll be buying new appliances. So they're going to make the home theirs. So you don't have to spend a ton of time making it perfect. It doesn't have to look like a model home. So don't overdo it. You don't necessarily need to repaint the whole house or redo the kitchen. Pencil everything out with your realtor. If you spend $20,000 on the house fixing it up, are you really gonna get 20,000 more? Especially if most of the buyers are planning to do the work anyway. Okay, we have a big however here. The home needs to be livable now. A lot of these projects are thinking about to make the home theirs may take years to finish. So your home must be attractive and inviting. You don't want to scare the buyer into thinking that the to-do list will be a huge deal. Buyers almost always tend to overestimate how much it'll cost to replace things. And it's easier for a buyer to imagine their dream home if there are only a few simple repairs to be done. So to sum up things, I mean, we're in a seller's market right now, but if it changes to a buyer's market, things are gonna be different. In a seller's market, you can get away with doing less to get that home sold. In a buyer's market, you've got a lot more competition out there and you need to do a bit more work. So look at the market, talk to your realtor, and figure out what you need to do to sell your home. Tip number two, lighter is better. During the early 2000s, the trend was toward a neo-European look. Everything was dark, darker, olive colored walls, trim, carpet, and wood. But for the last 10 years, things have lightened up. So it's always better in today's market to make your home bright and cheerful rather than dark and classic looking. 
Things that darken your home are dark paint and carpet, obviously, too many pieces of furniture, especially if they're dark furniture, too much furniture in few open spaces. In other words, space out the furniture, too many pictures on the wall, kind of the same thing with the furniture. You need some breathing room in between pictures, breathing room in between furniture to lighten things up. Dark cabinets, dark curtains. And you know, one thing I see a lot is too many throw rugs in the hallways or the kitchen. It's like every space has a throw rug that darkens the house. It also makes it look smaller. And general rule of thumb is the smaller the home, the more you need to do to brighten it up and to make it look bigger. Let's talk about the basement. This is a huge area to work on and add some value. First, replace all of the light bulbs. They need to be instant on bright LED lights. So what's gonna happen is the realtors are gonna walk in there with the buyer and they're gonna flip on the switch. And if that light bulb takes five minutes to warm up to its you know, full extent, uh, that they're gonna be gone. They're gonna be into another room and then the buyer's gonna walk outside and say, nah, basement was dark. And it's probably because of the light bulb. So get rid of the bulbs, take time to brighten up. Don't use daylight bulbs, but warm white bulbs. See the chart that, that I'm including right here? You don't want the daylight bulbs because it looks like a garage. And you want the warm white bulbs and the light tends to bend around corners and so forth. Assume that the person is not going to wait around for the bulbs to warm up, as I mentioned before. It must be instantly bright. Look at all the dark spots in the basement. Uh, if you don't have a light there, maybe put a proximity light, something that as they walk by, the light comes on. Because we want to make it as bright as possible. The person showing your house is not going to search around and try to brighten things up for you. They're just gonna hit the switch, move to the next room, and move on. Paint, okay, I'm a former Navy guy, but I have to admit the battleship gray is out. Folks are moving toward a very light gray or a mix of beige and gray. Agreeable gray is one color that is popular, but the goal is to brighten the house. So have your realtor walk around the house and look at it from a buyer's perspective. One thing to notice is that that hole in the wall that's been there since 1994, you may not even notice anymore, but the agent's going to, to really notice it, and certainly the buyer will. How can you make your home more bright and cheerful? That's the goal. Tip number three, fix the obvious things. And I'm not talking colors and paints and things like that, but I'm talking about you know toilets and leaky faucets and things like that. While your home doesn't have to look like a model home, it can't look like a car leaking oil in your driveway. Have your furnace, air conditioner, and water heater serviced. Post proof of that recent service job near the appliance, and then clean up the area around it. I walk into a lot of furnace rooms, it's really sad. So sweep it out, clean it up, maybe post something. There used to be something called green stickers here, but post something up there saying it's recently been serviced. Once your home is under contract, they're gonna have it inspected by a home inspector. And the home inspector is gonna say things like, the water heater and furnace are nearing the end of their life. And this scares buyers. They think that the water heater is gonna blow up the day after they buy the home. So put a small sign saying that the appliances were inspected and serviced on such and such a date. And even though the appliances are older, that should alleviate many concerns on the buyers walking through the home. Go around and fix any plumbing leaks. Clean up the mess the leaks cause. Replace light bulbs, which we already talked about in the basement. Have the carpet cleaned. Even if you're planning to give uh, a carpet allowance, at least have it clean. Declutter and de-junk. The house could be immaculate, and toys and pillows and paper all around the place is gonna make it look bad. You can always box up the clutter, as I mentioned before, and put it in the garage. Buyers understand that you're moving, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can have boxes around. If you do kind of move them to one side of the room, uh, they know that you're moving, and they can still see the room and get a feel for how open it is. Paint the walls if you can, and if the budget allows but at least paint any of the walls that lower your home's value. I think of teenager rooms, right? The dark blue rooms or the bright purple rooms or bright orange or something like that. Paint those, or at least put a sign there saying it will be painted. It makes the house smell new. It makes the home look brighter. It covers up little scars, dents, and damage. And really for the buyer, it's easy to overlook little items when the house smells fresh and looks bright. Pets and tobacco. Okay, please don't be offended. But I have noticed over the years that some pet owners do not seem to notice that their pets have a pet odor. As an example, we have two cats and I really don't notice any smell until I go downstairs to where they eat and do other things. If you have pets, just assume that a certain percentage of the buyers are going to be allergic to them or truly believe that your pets have relieved themselves in every corner of the house. I'm serious. 
Don't get upset, that will be their natural reaction. Just assume 20% of the buyers are gonna feel that way. Some may have severe allergies. You're gonna see a similar reaction with pipe or cigarette odors. Move the pets to the garage or outside as much as possible while you're selling your house. If you smoke, try to smoke outside. Move the large pet food bowl to the garage if you can. Paint the walls and clean the carpet to cover any odor. Don't make it obvious that you have a lot of pets in the house. Have your realtor to tell the buyer's realtor about any cage pets outside or in the garage that you have. You don't want them to come around and be shocked or have a heart attack when the dog starts barking at them. I have shown homes to buyers in which they immediately turned around after we entered the front door. The house may have been perfect for them, but they were bombarded by strong pet or strong tobacco odors right off the bat. Have your realtor walk around the house with fresh eyes and a fresh nose to mitigate any potential problems. Tip number four. Okay, the big thing is roof. Roof is a big deal. If the roof is falling apart, most buyers are gonna walk. It's a huge expense, uh, you know, ten to $20,000 that needs to be really done now. But if they don't walk, they may after their home inspection, which will waste a lot of your time. Or they may come back with a demand that you replace your roof after the inspection. At a minimum, you should, you know, have your damaged shingles replaced. If the roof is old, the next step would be to have the roof reshingled. Worst case, you just may have to replace the roof. A bad roof may not deter the buyer from making an offer, but the home inspector or the appraiser comments may prevent the buyer from closing, thus wasting your time. You may waste three weeks, only have to cancel because the roof is bad. A bad roof will not pass, usually, FHA or VA guidelines. Also, if the appraisal comments on the roof, the lender may require you to have it inspected by a roof inspector and then have the appraiser go back out there and reinspect it. Old appliances. If you have your old appliances serviced, you know, like the green sticker I talked about, and given a clean bill of health, that will go far to stop the buyer from asking you to replace them with brand new appliances. Even if you sell your house with a home warranty, the home warranty company will usually not service an appliance that was broken before the buyer bought the home. So fix them or replace them you know, before you put it on the market. It may be worthwhile to go out and get a screaming deal on an appliance, you know, new stove right now, and put a brand new stove in there because you know you're probably gonna have to replace it anyway. If there's something that is obvious that needs fixing, say anything damaged, be sure to have a quote handy on a piece of paper to give to the buyer. You can just put it on the counter. You may have a quote to fix an item for $1,000 that the buyer may believe is gonna cost $8,000 to fix. Most buyers prefer air conditioning units to swamp coolers. It's not a total deal killer, but in a buyer's market, when you can go next door and find your same house for the same price with an air conditioner, they're probably gonna go in that direction. In general, about 50% of the time, sellers offer to include the refrigerator with the sale of the home. But only about 10% of the time do they offer a washer dryer with the home. A first time home buyer is gonna love having the fridge included, as they are usually scraping the barrel to get the house in the first place. Okay, the yard. Similar to decluttering your house, try to remove all the extra stuff from your yard before you put your home on the market. If you don't have time to sell or, or dump the items, put them in one area so it'll make it obvious that, to the buyer that they're on their way to the dump or they're on way, you know, going to be moved. Be sure to mow the lawn, pick the weeds, etc. And a nice touch is to get a couple of big flower pots with bright, beautiful flowers, put them near the front door. Hopefully pick a flower that's not gonna have a lot of bees there. I've seen that before where you couldn't even get on the front porch because there are too many bees around. The four tips above will help you get your home ready to sell in the fastest time. Price will be the key, of course, so make sure that have your realtor pull real data off the MLS versus guessing with some of the online real estate websites. If you would like a free home seller's guide, relocation guide, or home buyer's guide, click on the links below. I also have the current Salt Lake Area real estate marketing forecast as a link. You can go ahead and click on that. Please make some comments below. Please subscribe, and if I can help you anyway, let me know. Thanks, good luck, see ya.